Please join together in our gathering hymn number 735. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Number 735. celebrate that hope that comes from the transfiguration of our Lord. Let us acknowledge our sins and thus prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries on this feast of the Lord's transfiguration. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, Grant we pray to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. 
As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion glory and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks. second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. And then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus didn't change on that mountain. Their perception of him did. The glory that was his was now visible to them, brought into focus, if you will. The purpose was not simply to give them the glimpse of glory that is in Christ, but to bring into focus for them what the destiny of this human existence is about, the ultimate goal, that glory that we too will be given a share in, acknowledging the beloved Son, listening to him, as we make our way to the kingdom. He brings them up to this mountaintop perspective as they're making their way to the place where he would be denied, tortured, crucified, and it would seem that all has failed. From that glimpse of glory, they have an interior strength. The reality they were going to face wasn't going to change. The cross did not disappear. The seeming failure didn't go away. But they had that interior perspective. That's one of the first reasons Jesus leads them up that mountaintop, to give them that perspective. I think we can understand it just geographically from a mountaintop. Sometimes it's so easy to get caught up and you go up on a mountain and all of a sudden you see so much. From that perspective, the reality doesn't change. But you might see this beautiful area that you never noticed before. Or you might be so caught up in the beauty that you didn't realize all this devastation over there. Something must have happened there. The mountaintop perspectives helps us to do more than just face things one after the other as it comes. This wasn't just for the disciples, but it's for all of us. The Lord invites continually for us to take that perspective. In my pastor's letter this week, I write it to you in terms of Eucharistic adoration, the most wonderful way we can leave the ordinary and enter into that encounter as the disciples had with Jesus on that mountaintop. For it is Christ himself present here. No symbol, no representation. Jesus Christ himself. We affirm that every time we receive communion. And we don't receive it silently. But we're only given the Eucharistic Lord after we have clearly said, Amen. I believe. This Feast of the Transfiguration invites us to look at how often we accept the Lord's invitation to go apart. Or how easy it is to just trudge along. It builds on what we've been hearing in the past few weeks about living in light of eternity. Keeping our focus on the vertical, the upward, so as not to be bogged down or absorbed in the horizontal pursuit of everything around us. But the mountaintop with the Lord is not meant to be an escape, but rather the source of strengthening to enter reality. Just as the Mass is not something we come in here and somehow enter a bubble and then check that one off and go back to life as normal. What we receive, we are to carry. 
Last week we had a beautiful celebration at both Sunday morning Masses for Nathaniel. Tomorrow he begins the trek to Indiana to enter the Congregation of Holy Cross and begin formation for the priesthood with them. We pray in this Mass for his safe travel and are grateful that he is here serving and helping us with communion as he attends Mass here for one last time uh, before entering. Tomorrow morning we will celebrate with Christian as he prepares to enter the seminary for diocesan priesthood continuing formation. But whether it be for Nathaniel or for Christian or any man who enters the seminary, the time of formation is that invitation to come up the mountain, to listen attentively to Jesus, to see him for who he really is, but then to be sent down with the strength that was gained from that mountain, with the insights gained from that mountain, to endure all as they become ministers of his cross and not only of his glory. And so for you and I, the question is set before us, how often do I go apart? Do I recognize that need? Or do I find myself distracted by all the good things I chase after, or lately frustrated and overwhelmed by all the negative? Either feeling is an indication that we need to accept the Lord's invitation to come apart, to see from a different perspective. When we do, in listening to him, in listening to his word, in bringing ourselves before him, then he sheds light. And I thank so many of you who have told me how you've discovered that over these past years that illumination that has come to you, not from reading a book or talking to experts, but from coming to the Lord himself. St. Peter, in reflecting back on what he experienced on that mountain, in today's second reading, sums up what they got and what happens to us when we're willing to do the same. He speaks about the light shining in a dark place. That's what our union with Christ and our attachment to his word is. Our focus on a light that shines in the midst of the darkness until the morning star dawns in your heart. In other words, until we enter fully into his glory. May we all be wise enough to seek the glimpses that bring joy and renewed strength all along the way. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
In confident faith, we bring our needs to God. For all who shepherd the people of God, may their words and witness lead many to discover the nearness of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an embrace of time apart and given to prayer that leads us to live in the light of eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian, as he prepares to continue his formation for the priesthood and service in our diocese, may God, who has begun this good work, bring it to completion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who put themselves at risk for the service and protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed relatives, friends, and benefactors, and especially for Germaine and George Dubois, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another, and for all on our prayer line, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, receive what we offer in the confidence of faith, making our prayer as we seek to do everything always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing song number 123, Transfiguration. Song number 123.
my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings made here to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son. And by his radiant splendor, cleanse us of the stains of our sin through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. of chosen witnesses and filled the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what was so wonderfully shown forth first in its head and so with all the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought you for consecration, that they become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith.
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joseph and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you with their passing through this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We leave church today. Kathy will be outside on the plaza. If you were in the 2020 club and like to keep your number, you can see her. The tickets are now on sale. If you haven't and would like to, $20 gets you 20 chances to win and the bonus prizes at the end. This provides for extra opportunities in our parish by its funding and is a wonderful uh, opportunity uh, for diversity in being able to support the effort. So see Kathy outside uh, on the plaza. Also in the bulletin, as I've mentioned before, there are many things that are coming up. This Tuesday night is the info night on RCIA and I'm very happy to say that we have a large and very diverse group of people who are considering exploring our Catholic faith. If you know of someone, read the announcement. Have you shown that announcement to anybody? All the ones who came, it's because someone invited them, someone showed them. Uh, if we don't get that and don't recognize that, the word is not going to be out there. So I thank those of you who pray, but then also invite. And uh, Tuesday night, we're looking forward to the gathering. It's described in the bulletin under Curious About Catholicism, uh, and there's still an opportunity to invite folks to come. The last of the books on the Holy Eucharist by Bishop Barron are available in the left-hand corner in the back of the church while they last. Also, uh, various other special events such as our hosting Scott Hahn in September. Uh, this internationally known writer and speaker uh, will be with us as part of our Eucharistic Awakening and opportunity will begin next weekend. So there's all kinds of other details with all of that, so uh, please be sure to uh, check out the things in the bulletin. And as I mentioned in the homily, today we pray uh, for Nathaniel's safe travel as he heads out uh, to Indiana and his entrance into the Congregation of Holy Cross. And from all the reaction I had from Nate Knight last Thursday, first of all, thank you to those of you who came and showed your personal encouragement. You know, we say we want a lot of things in the church. We gotta put ourselves there. We gotta show that we mean it. So I'm so grateful to those of you who did. And the common comment is the Lord has led him correctly uh, to follow his vocation in an order that is involved in teaching. Uh, it was a wonderful, insightful, uh, and entertaining evening. And those are great marks of a great teacher. So as we wish Nathaniel, he'll be outside. You'll have a chance to greet him as you leave. And uh, let us continue to keep him in prayer. And tomorrow we celebrate uh, with Christians. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our closing song is number 431. I sing the mighty power of God. Number 431.